you can't take Christ out of a Christian. You get a lot of uh, Muslims especially, and they're saying, you seem like a very noble man. You know, they're writing this about different videos that I have. And I think you should check into Islam or whatever else, or you should study the Quran and, and uh, you know, then you'll come to a deeper understanding or some kind of thing like this. Um, <clears throat> I'm born again, okay? I will never leave Jesus Christ. I can't, okay? Let me share a verse of scripture with you here. Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10, out of my little Bible here. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Uh, there's a lot of people that have sorrow of the world. Oh, I'm a sinner. I'm, I'm this, I'm that. I, oh, I want to get saved. I want to be a Christian. And they do it. And uh, they're there for a little while with the Lord, and then they end up falling away. And, and um, they get drawn in, and now they're converted to Islam or something like this. Um, because they had worldly sorrow. They didn't have godly sorrow. The Holy Spirit wasn't really there convicting them of who they are. Not just what they've done, but who they are. But when you truly get saved, when you truly get born again, um, there's a you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. And at that point in time, um, you now are in the Christian faith and you have no desire to leave Jesus Christ. Uh, it doesn't even cross your mind. You know, I think of the verse in... John chapter 6, when the disciples, a lot of the disciples that were following Jesus, not his 12, but the others, there were other disciples that were following him, and um, they leave because Jesus says some things that they don't like. And uh, Jesus turns to the 12 and he says, basically, are you going to leave as well? And they say, where would we go? <laughs> Thou only hast the words of eternal life. Where am I going? Oh, you want me to go to Islam? No, thank you. Doesn't have anything to offer me. Um rather not worship uh, some rock or whatever it is that they, you know, the Mecca or Medina or the Kaaba stone or whatever the thing is. Um, I don't really deal with many Muslims where I'm at, so I've never made it a practice to really study the, that cult in depth. Uh, well, you should become a Noahide. <clears throat> yeah. So then I had to go around, you know, trying to keep a bunch of commandments that were made up by men. No, no thank you. Um, well, you could become a Roman Catholic. Uh, no, rather not. I'm not going to go confess my sins to a sinner, a priest. Um, be an atheist. Mm, no. <laughs> I uh, tried that back when I was a professing Christian, and I had no conviction of sin, and uh, I had worldly sorrow, but I didn't have godly sorrow back then. But, you know, I, I lived basically as an atheist without reference to God other than when I would go to church. Um, that stuff doesn't have anything for me. And... Um, once you get genuinely born again, there isn't anything else but Jesus Christ. And uh, I'd like to point out the fact that I am not the one that uh, should try to prove my system or something, or I'm kind of at a disadvantage to all the other great religions out there. Um, no, actually Jesus Christ is the greatest head of any religion that's ever been made on this earth. Uh, there isn't anything else that compares to Jesus Christ. Um, Christianity, even the fake, you know, Roman Catholic and all the Protestant denominations out there that people don't actually have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, they're not genuinely born again, in other words, um, it's still better than anything else out there. Um, Christianity produces the very best people. And, you know, well, I can find people that are bad. Yeah, you can find that in anything. But I'm saying uh, pound for pound, ounce for ounce, whatever you want to say, Christianity still produces better people than anything else out there. Um, and I've seen the miraculous power of the Lord in my life. I have seen him do things um, and, you know, used the name Jesus when in trouble in some very serious uh, spiritual issues. We're dealing with uh, devils manifesting themselves. And I've seen the power of the name of Jesus. Um, if you speak Hebrew, then say Yeshua, but if you speak English, say Jesus. You say, how do you know that? Because it works. I've seen it. So, um, if you're a Christian out there, genuinely born again, you've tested and proved the Lord. Um, you know, I think of the hymn, well, I'll say, I'll finish my statement. If you're a Christian and you've tested and proved the Lord, 
uh, you've arrived, you've achieved. There's nothing better than what you have. Um, think of the old hymn, you know, Jesus, Jesus, how I uh, proved him. No, how, how I trust him, excuse me. How I've proved him more and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. That one, and I mean, there's so many hymns, so many beautiful old hymns. Um, I don't need uh, to consider joining another religion or whatever else. I found the right one. So I'll put some salvation messages here at the end that you can watch and understand what it means to be saved to be genuinely born again. And um, if you're a Muslim out there or whatever other type of system, a Jew that's rejected Jesus as your Messiah, well, you better uh, rethink your system that you're part of because you're missing out. So that's going to be it. Thank you very much for watching.